here live at the 2019 Wolfram Technology Conference. I'm Sylvia Haas and I run social media for Wolfram Research. And I'm here with my co-host. Hi, I'm Rich and I'm part of the Wolfram Emerging Leaders Program. We're here with Shadi Yashnai, who's uh, the director, manager of sound and vision here at Wolfram. And she's Hi. here to tell us about Wolfram audio, image, and video processing. Yes. So can you tell us a little bit about what you do at Wolfram? I'm the manager of uh, the team that is currently renamed to Sound and Vision. So we started with image processing, then we added signal processing and audio processing. The next big thing is video. <laughs> when we were adding video, we knew that we needed a new name for the team. That's when the new name came. So what does your day-to-day -day look like? We're, we're in the R&D team, so we're basically doing most of the research and development. It's Day-to-day, -day it's a lot of programming, a lot of research, paper reading, looking at the state-of-the-art algorithms for um, doing image processing, audio processing, and so forth. And we are also looking at a lot of applications so that we know the development that we are doing in R&D is actually, at the end, is going to be useful and uh, to the point for anyone who's using our stuff. Very cool. So can you tell me a little bit about what you're doing at the conference? A lot of talks. <laughs> the whole sound and vision team, I think, are doing eight talks this year. Oh. <laughs> and uh, we are, um, all of our team, or most of our team, is remote, including myself. So we are getting to, it's basically a family or company <laughs> group reunion for us every year in Champaign as well. And on top of that, we are excited every year to see um, our customers here in Champaign, uh, which is giving us the best feedback we can get because they're already using um, the functions that we provide to them, and um, they're always asking for more. That's awesome. Can you explain what's new in Sound and Vision this year? Video. We were talking about video. Uh, tomorrow we have talks. Um, it's the beginning of it, but we have been working for it for a very long time. Import-export has, has been a very significant part of it. Previously, we used to support um, only two formats, AVI and QuickTime. We're adding as many formats as we can so that people can interact with um, any video that they may have at their desk. Um, so what I'm showing on the screen is uh, basically a bullet point that we have already available in the upcoming version of Mathematica, or uh, it's going to be there very soon. Um, Sneak peek. <laughs> yeah, a sneak peek, exactly. Um, so these are the formats that we're going to be supporting. So as I said, we only had AVI and QuickTime. There are a lot of encoding outs out there, um, which is hidden underneath the MP4 or MOV that you get. Any one of them could have many different encodings. Um, this is basically just a list that says almost any encoding out there is going to be supported. Awesome. Um, and then as far as what elements can be supported, um, as for any other format that is supported by the Wolfram language, we typically support um, general uh, data formats. In this case, audio, video, video stream are going to be ge general data formats or elements, uh, but then as well a lot of metadata, like how long it is, um, what is the dimension of every frame, what's the sample rate of the audio, and so forth. Um, the cool thing I want to show is this player, which is not probably going to be the final player that we're going to release, um, but it is a player. Um, so this is Mathematica Notebook. It's basically having a video player inside of it. It's not the main feature. We don't want to create yet another video player. There is enough of it. But we just want to have enough of a player in Mathematica Notebook so that we, when we are processing, analyzing, we can actually see what happened to the audio. Um, I'll let you watch that later. Um, um, all right, video stream is another thing. This is not as exciting as the video object, but uh, it's basically a programmatic way of doing the same, same thing that I did above. Um, so let me make this just a bit smaller um, so that I can feel everything. Um, so if I start the playback, you can see up here that I have the uh, current position of the video. Basically, this is going to allow us, the video stream is going to allow us to create our own player or also stream and do any processing on that stream of frames and stream of audio buffers that come in. And so that will be directly from the notebooks? That's going to be directly from the notebooks. Awesome. Everything is built in. 
And then the cool things we can do is that, for instance, in this case, I'm calling this new function called video map that is taking image measurements, which we had already in the system, and it's computing mean intensity for each frame. Okay. And here I'm just plotting that mean intensity over time. Um, basic processing is also coming. Things like, for instance, in this example, I'm just calling an image processing function that reflects uh, from left to right, which is um, not that amusing, but let's just play it. I, it takes a little bit of time, so I just pre-computed that. Audio just gets copied, but this is now left to right rotated as a simple, simple example of how one may want to um, process. And then, um, so this video apply created this new uh, video file. Uh, for that, we needed export. So yes, we do have export. Um, and then upcoming development, uh, there is going to be a lot of video editing, like trim this video or trim this part of every video frame and things like that. Um, support video functions, um, support video object in almost every image processing operation so that we can just apply any of those frame by frame or two frame by two frame and so forth. And support video in all of the audio functions so that the audio tracks can be processed and so forth. Um, these are just some samples of functions that may be coming soon. Awesome. No promise yet. <laughs> this is the most exciting thing. All the audience here at the conference are asking us about video. Um, and I guess this is really the next big thing from our team. It's very cool. Wonderful. <laughs> Did you have more on any audio or anything else? Um, video is the main thing this year? So um, there is a lot still happening with image and audio, yes. Um, main, main two things that we have been trying to accomplish there is to fill the gaps. So any utility or small function that was missing from our set of functionality, we are trying to add that. And then we are trying to make all of that consistent whenever we are finding inconsistencies. So a lot of that is happening both in image, image and audio. We are also doing, I'll talk about that as well, uh, we're also doing a lot of machine learning integration. Uh, for image, uh, the, all of the neural nets machine learning capabilities uh, got developed with the um, point in mind that image is going to be one of the main users of it, so it was never behind. But for audio, audio got intru introduced later, and all of the integration of machine learning neural nets with audio came a bit later as well. Um, all right. Uh, the first thing in the image updates I wanted to mention, I put it up so that I don't forget. Um, <laughs> we are having an um, image processing MOOC. It's an introduction to image processing. It's very basic. It's very intuitive. Um, it's not very long, uh, 14 chapters, including very many applications, cool, nice, easy to follow application examples. This is intended for people who want to have their first step into image processing. Um, and it's not released yet. This is in our internal websites, but I'm guessing within a couple of weeks it's going to be out there available for, for public. There are also quizzes and things like that that people can take, and then there is certification and all of that, similar to anything else we have on Wolfram U. So that's big, big and exciting. Talking about MOOCs and courses, we are having a signal processing course um, that is also coming out of our team um, on their works, as well as a neural nets, which is in very early stages. But we also want to have a very intuitive, um, informative, educational, not really teaching mathematical or Wolfram language, teaching the concepts using all the capabilities we have, which is very nice. Um, yeah, a few things I've put in the, in the um, notebook I can talk about. Um, a lot of neural net machine learning integration advancements in there. Um, the neural net repository is being expanded on a daily, weekly basis. A lot of image networks is in there. Um, and then we are taking all of those, putting them back whenever we can as built-in functionalities, whether it is a new function or whether it is a new option for an existing or a new parameter for an existing function. Um, the things that I highlight in my notebook are things like um, face detection, which we, which we had before. Upcoming is face alignment. Uh, this is useful for when you want to map one face to another for doing morphing, or if you want to, say, add makeup or, or anything like yeah, that and, yeah. and, and do things like that. 
Um, along those lines, we have also added, um, we, we realize that as we understand images more, we need better ways of showing content on top of images. So our highlight image is being updated to take annotations, like this is the age of, the estimated age for each face. Um, it was possible before, it was just longer piece of code. Um, Audio updates, basically the same thing. Uh, we have a lot of new small capabilities that are coming, but a very big push for uh, having audio supported in machine learning and neural nets. Um, one of the examples I would like to highlight is, for example, this um, spoken digit data set that we have on our data repository. And this example is showing how to classify that. Um, we have uh, a lot of ways of extracting features uh, from audio. For instance, here we are using MFCC, which is a very commonly used feature from audio objects, audio signals. Um, and then training a small network here to do the classification. Towards the end, this is basically showing all of those audio signals in a 2D embedding um, and nicely separates all the zeros from um, ones and twos and so forth. This is a very nice classification of all the audio signals. A lot of that is coming. We have put a lot of focus on speech and speaker analysis, which is very exciting. Uh, we're hoping we can wrap that up and move on to some other cool areas when audios are involved. Um, among those are notable speaker. We had notable uh, person classifier, which was taking a face and trying to understand who does it look like or who it is. Same thing for um, notable speaker. Um, I have some other things, but let's uh, let's do a very quick test. Anybody want to be my tester? To okay, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, hi, we're at the Wolfram Technology Conference. All right, so Jamie Lynn Spears, <laughs> and let's interpret, in, interpret that as a person and get an image. I don't know her. I think there it's she Brittany is. Spears' little sister. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. There we go. So you sound like her. <laughs> um, all right, I scrolled past um, over a few things like speech interpreter, which is along the same lines. We, are, uh, we had interpreter in the system before, which was getting a string, which could be um, USA or the United States of America or any variation of the country USA. Um, now, that could be a spoken signal that you pass to a speech interpreter, and then uh, it's being speech recognized and sent back to um, interpreter to see what, what that country or whatever that class okay. is. Italy. Here, for instance, we have a recording of Italy. We pass it to speech interpreter. The country comes back. New York is the most populous city in the United States of America. Here we have a longer um, speech, which has cities and countries in it. So we pass it to speech cases. Again, it does speech recognition and pass it, passes it to text cases to see uh, what cities, what countries can be found in that recording. Um, and that same function could be used to get, say, interpretations and probabilities for those recordings. Um, and uh, one other nice thing that is coming, we are still working on a consistent design, is annotations. For instance, I have a signal, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do uh, to find all the voiced section of that. So, and then that audio is being annotated with that. We can plot it and things like that. So it's a lot, it's, it's developing, but all of these little things and big things are gonna come together in order to solve big, exciting projects. Yeah, wow. they seem really useful and super fun. I'm like looking forward <laughs> to being able to play with all of those. Great, great to yeah, hear that. So thanks so much for coming. Yeah, thank you for having me. <laughs> I look forward to your talks. All right, great.